In this video we're going to take a look at the Secure Decrypt Challenge on Hack the Box. It's an easy reversing challenge and the description says Timmy created a secure decryption program. So we've got some files to download and I've already got those in the local directory. Just before we jump into the challenge, let me take a second to recommend Silk's channel. Every week Silk, Gatorby, Gulo and Gowry have been doing these Hacker Hangout streams which in my opinion are criminally underrated so I'll put a link up to the channel. Um, check it out after this video of course. Uh, with that out of the way let's jump into the challenge. So it's taken me a little while to record this video. I solved the challenge a while ago but I've been trying to find out whether it's the intended solution or whether there's a, a better way to solve it or a different way at least which I haven't found as of yet so maybe somebody watching this video will be able to let me know. But um, we download the files, we've got a core dump and we've got this uh, binary. Let me actually do file so we've got a core dump, we have a binary called des, which is for de decrypt as we saw in the challenge description and then we have a source file as well, so we're actually given the code for the decryption binary. Uh, this solve.c is a script that I've written to solve the challenge, so we'll take a look at the, that at the end. Let's open up the source.c first of all and try and work out what's going on. So if we start at our main function here, we can see that they've left a comment letting us know how we can recompile this if we want to make some changes. And we have an initialization vector which is set to 16 A's. We have a key which is going to grab the key from an environment variable called key. Uh, key size, 16 bytes. We've got a buffer which is declared and again 16 bytes. And then it's going to load a ciphertext, so it's going to call read file with a flag.enc, so an encrypted flag and it's going to read 16 bytes from that file. So we've got a 16 byte flag and it's going to call decrypt with the ciphertext 16 bytes, the initialization vector of A's, the key which we don't know yet and the key size of 16 and then it's going to print out the decrypted contents. So obviously we've been given a core dump so somewhere along the lines um, this, ha this has been executed, the flag's been loaded and it's tried to decrypt but somewhere in the middle of that there's been some kind of segmentation fault, the program's crashed and it's dumped out the core dump which will have not only some information about the code but it'll have um, stack variables and things like that in there so if the key has been loaded into the program that should be in the dump and similarly the ciphertext should be in the dump somewhere as well depending on what stage the core dump uh, was generated depending on when the program crashed. So. If we want to, well, let's have a look at these functions more specifically. We've got the read file function and it's going to create a file pointer. It's going to open file name, which is going to be the encrypted flag. It's going to call malloc with, so it's going to grab 16 bytes on from the heap. So this pointer is going to point to that data on the, on the heap. And then it's going to read 16 bytes into this data, which is just allocated. And then it's going to close that and return the data. Um, and then that data is going to be sent through to the decrypt function which we can go and have a look at the decrypt but essentially this is just going to perform an AES encryption which is in CBC, so cipher block chain in mode but uh, hopefully we won't need to worry too much about the actual encryption and decryption here and let's just try and focus on recovering these different elements. So we know that the initialization vector is hard coded, so we've already got that, that's fine. We can recreate this a little. Uh, we obviously need the key, and then we need the ciphertext. And if we can recover all of those pieces of information, we can essentially run a similar algorithm, or we can use probably CyberChef or write a Python script to do this decryption for us. So in terms of trying to find this environment variable, the key, um, whenever the program's run, obviously it's going to grab the key from the environment variable, so that'll be in the core dump, and the A's are defined just before that, so it'd be quite easy to go and look for these A's, and then from there identify where the environment variable is, which would be our key. Um, what I'm going to do is just jump over to Geardra, where I've got both of these projects open, um, both the core dump and the decryption. So if we go into the decryption just first of all, um, there's no point having a look too much at the code here because we have access to the full C code, but uh, we could go in here and have a look and as expected if we search for key in here we shouldn't find anything because the key hasn't been set in the binary. But if we go over to our core dump and do the same thing, search for strings and look for the key, and this time we'll actually find that the key is in here. 
So it's in there as a string. You know, we didn't we didn't really need to do that inside a gear drill. We can just do strings dash n ten core, and we'll see the key in here somewhere. Key is right here. So this is the key. So now we've got the key. We've got the initialization vector. We know what the algorithm is. We know what the mode is. The only thing we're missing is the cipher text. So unfortunately, identifying the location of the cipher text isn't quite as easy because we know that the A's were on the stack and then the key was placed onto the stack as well. But if we look at the read file function here, what it's actually doing is creating a pointer to the memory that's allocated on the heap by malloc. So we know that we have a pointer on the stack which is pointing to our cipher text, but we don't actually we can't just um, look on the stack for that cipher text like we could the other two pieces of data. Um, so I spent quite a bit of time trying to find a kind of a logical solution to this. If we go over to, well, let's actually just jump back over to Geardra first of all. So in Geardra, if we have a look at our core dump, the code that we're seeing in here presumably is is the code that we would be um, that was being processed at the time of the core dump and we'll have the data in here somewhere as well which is going to be our cipher text but uh, identifying the offset obviously is the issue. We could go over to our uh, decryption binary here and we could go and start having a look at the functions here although we have access to all of the code we might want to go and have a look at some of the addresses and the offsets and the instructions here so if we were able to identify the instruction that the program crashed on we could kind of go from there and try and find out how far away is the um, was the ciphertext loaded from there, etc. Um, so let me jump over to GDB. I'm going to do GDB pwn debug, and you can actually load, we'll load um, the decryption binary, and then we'll also load the core dump here. Now, you'll notice I've just got quite a few errors, and whenever I was initially working on this program, uh, on this challenge, I wasn't getting these errors. It looks like to do with the libc library that I'm using now. So I know that previously, whenever I loaded this I was able to do uh, search dash s and if we go in uh, let me actually just do strings dash n10 core and grep for key uh, so what was happening here previously is if I actually took some of this key and did a search for string and then put in some of this key it would actually show me the stack the string on the stack and I could do the same thing then with the A's as well. Um, but now I just get errors in GDB, which presumably is something to do with these errors here, um, the library version mismatch, because whenever I was trying this, like maybe two months ago, I wasn't getting these errors and I was able to find quite a bit more information. But anyway, we loaded the core dump, we loaded the binary, so we can look at some things here. We can try and do like info stack. Um, we can have a look and see, let's do info registers and you can basically get the state of the program whenever this crashed so um, let's do, we can print our RIP and try and identify where the program actually crashed so I went and tried to look for this address in our core dump and I did the same with a couple of different register values. We can also do like um, info proc mapping, which will show us some of the heap mappings. But from the research that I was doing, it doesn't seem to be a way to easily identify where the ciphertext is from this. If there is, let me know. Maybe I'm just completely missing some kind of logical step that needs to be taken here. But um, I was kind of hoping that we would be able to have a look at the uh, location of the pointer on the stack. So, you know, we, we have a pointer pointing to the data which was allocated on the heap. If we know where this is pointing to, then we should be able to just go and grab this data. But maybe it's to do with the errors that I'm getting that I'm not be able to, not, not able to do that. Or maybe I just I'm missing some technique. Um, I was also looking at the GDB heap project as well, but... Um, yeah, I didn't make too much progress here, so what I'm going to do is jump over to the solution which I did uh, use to solve this. Actually, just before we jump into the solution, let me open up um, a Python script as well. So I was initially trying to solve this. You can see that I have the AES imported here. So I was initially trying to write a Python script to decrypt this for us once we have identified the 
ciphertext uh, because we can load the core dump using Pwn tools and we can analyze some of the information in here. You can see we're printing out the registers, the stack, the mappings, etc. Let's take a look at that. So you can see each of these sections is printed out. Let's go from the top. We have our registers up here. You can see we've got our mappings as well. And yeah, there's our environment. I was kind of hoping that um, we would be able to use some of this information to just identify the exact offset, the exact location of the ciphertext. And maybe you can. Maybe I'm missing something. I hope that if somebody solved this um, using Pwn tools or GDB, that uh, you can let me know in the comments what I did wrong or what uh, what I was missing. Uh, but I wasn't able to get this working. Let's jump over to the solution now. So I'm going to open up Codium Solve.c, and essentially what I've done here, I've taken out all of the encryption codes. So you can see we've got a decrypt function, which is exactly the same. Let me move this over. Is exactly the same as it was in here. You can see the decrypt. Um, but we don't need an encrypt function obviously. We've set our key because we know that this is the hard coded key that was used at the time and uh, everything else is the same and then here all we're doing is we're opening the core dump we're basically gonna loop through and every grab every 16 bytes of the core dump and then we're gonna treat it as the ciphertext and try to decrypt it. Um, so you can see we can try and uh, print out each time it tries to decrypt it. What I'm doing is I'm basically just trying to decrypt every 16 byte block of the core dump file and then check to see whether it begins with HTB. If it does, then we'll print it out and print out what was the offset in the file. So uh, we were given this instruction on how to compile it, so we'll do that. Um, we, you also need to make sure you have libmcryptdev installed, sudo apt. So you can do sudo apt get install libmcryptdev um, to install that. And let's try and compile it. and we'll make it executable, run the binary, and very quickly we get our flag, time to learn C, and we find out that the offset in the core dump was the 21,648th byte. So, um, yeah, that's the solution. Let me go back and just, let's uh, take this printf out, so you can, if we wanted to, we could run this and just print out each of the ciphertexts that it tries to decrypt uh, just if you want a bit of extra debugging. So that's how I solve the challenge anyway. It always feels a little bit dirty using a brute force in solution like that. I really don't feel like that's the intended solution but I did reach out to the challenge author and I have reached out on the Hack the Box um, Discord a couple of times and haven't heard any other ways to solve this. Um, if if that wasn't the intended solution and you know what the intended solution is or you have a better way to solve this or a better way to approach these kind of challenges in future, any tips or tricks for how to um, analyze the core dumps in GDB or Pwn tools or anything like that, then let me know in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, comments, leave them down below. Thanks.